Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, then please scroll just a little bit underneath this video and press subscribe because it would genuinely mean a lot to me. We're trying to push for a thousand subscribers by the end of 2020, where hopefully we'll be back outside again. So that would be a win-win for me. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the rich kids in F1. And obviously every single F1 driver is a rich kid if you think about it like that. But I'm talking about the really rich kids, the kids who have been born into money, who don't really need to have a job at all. They can just live off the money that they have already. So our first rich kid of the day is obviously going to be Lance Stroll. Lance Stroll is the son of Lawrence Stroll. And Lawrence Stroll, if you didn't know already, he is a Canadian billionaire. He has an estimated net worth of 2.6 billion dollars and that is almost as much as tesla the way he made all of that money uh he has in he's an entrepreneur um that's what he likes to call himself and in his career he has invested in ralph loren he's invested in bringing them to canada which they weren't before he was around so i guess canada are grateful for him he also has investments in Tommy Hilfiger and he also has investments in Michael Kors. So he's got major investments in three fashion brands. So why is he in F1? Well, as well as his lots of money that he's got in fashion and other businesses like that, he also has quite a large amount of money in the Racing Point F1 team. He was the one who saved them, saved the pink car when they were Force India back in Britain 2018. He gave them a big lot of money and he said, this is my team now. Anyway, as I said, he is the father of Lance Stroll and Lance Stroll is going into his fourth season in F1, providing we get racing this year. And he has been in F1 since he was 18. He's had two seasons with Williams so far, they are 2017 and 18, and his 2017 and his F1 career in all got off to quite a rough start. He had, in his first six races, he had four DNFs and two non-points positions, and that was a 15th and an 11th, if I remember correctly. But Lance Stroll isn't as bad as those first six races say he was he then went on in that first season to get a podium in azerbaijan or baku he then qualified fourth in the italian gp in 2017 but both red bulls got penalty which means he became the youngest ever person to start grand prix on the front row of the grid he then finished fourth in germany 2019 his 2018 series uh, season wasn't as notable he was obviously in the worst car on the grid by an absolute cunt mile so yeah he's actually done quite well for himself because his dad has all the money and he's bought his way essentially into that racing point team and actually I strongly believe um, that that is where he should be it's a good enough car for him and he can occasionally get good results I mean if he really wanted to win he'd have to be in a Mercedes but I'm not sure even Lawrence Stroll can afford to buy out like half of Mercedes. And it's not just F1 that he's got results with. He also has a fifth place finish in the 24 hours of Daytona, I believe in 2017, but I'm not entirely sure because I'm not really that into American racing. And he got that fifth place with Ford. I think it was Chip Ganassi Ford Racing something. And he got that in the current Ford GT prototype. So yeah, good for him. He's not just an F1 driver, he is a rounded person. Our next very rich man on our list is going to be Michael Latifi, another Canadian billionaire just like Lawrence Stroll, but his money is from a lot of food brands. So he founded Safina Foods in 2006. Under that big hat of Safina Foods, we have a lot of Canadian companies that we've never heard of, such as Lilydale, Jane's, Mastro, San Daniel, Fletcher's and Cuddy. And they also have the exclusive distribution rights in Canada for three Italian food or beverage companies. And they are 
Rio Mare or Rio Mar, I haven't heard of them. San Benedetto, again, I haven't heard of them. And Lavazza. Lavazza, obviously the big Italian coffee brand. Um, it's easily the biggest brand in Mr. Michael Latifi's collection, uh, if you want to put it like that. But another big brand he has in his collection, not under Safina Foods, but actually just for himself because when you're that rich, you don't ex exactly need to worry about where you spend your money. So he owns 10% of the McLaren group and that was for an estimated 270 million US dollars. As you are probably aware by now, he is the father of Nicholas Latifi. And Nicholas Latifi, he is going into his first season in Formula One at the moment. He's a bit of a late bloomer in terms of being a sportsman. He is 24 years of age compared to uh, quite a few of the F1 drivers on the grid who are starting much younger than that. Uh, most notably, our boy Lance Stroll and Lando Norris, uh, starting uh, at age 18 and 19 respectively. And we've also got, obviously, Max Verstappen, who started at a completely ridiculous age 16. So, yeah, I mean, there's that. Anyway, back on the topic. He is starting his F1 career in Williams, just like his other billionaire Canadian counterpart, Lance Stroll, did three years ago. He has been in Formula 2 from 2014 to 19, except... Technically, he's been in GP2 from 2014 to 17 until that got rebranded in 2017 to be F2. So, you may be wondering why I have made uh, half of this video dedicated to two drivers who have a lot of money. Uh, that is because I wanted to address a little bit of an issue that we as F1 fans have, and that is paid drivers. We obviously we are very aware that paid drivers exist in F1 and they always will exist because that's what makes F1 work. F1 and all motorsport, right the way up from cadet karting to Formula 1, is expensive and there is absolutely no way around it. If we didn't have these drivers bringing the money into F1, then we wouldn't have the sport that we love. These two drivers in particular, I think, are going to get a lot more hate than they will deserve because actually they are incredible drivers they are much better than you or me they get obviously a lot of abuse because it's it's true they are only in f1 because they have quite rich parents but that is not to say that they don't deserve to be there because they have proved so far obviously less so with nicholas latifi because we don't really know what he can do but Definitely, in Lance Stroll's case, he has proved that he is absolutely worthy of that racing point seat. And there is, he just, I don't know, I, I've said it like loads of times, he just does not deserve the hatred that some people give to him just because he's only in there because of his rich dad. And yes, it's true. His dad is rich. He's got more money than most people will ever see in their lives. And he can spend it just like that. And he doesn't really have to care about it because he has a lot of money. But that is no reason to disrespect his son because it's not Lance's fault. And Lance is a good driver, whether or not you like it. And to be fair, quite a lot of F1 drivers are actually pay drivers. You wouldn't think, for instance, that Lewis Hamilton is a pay driver. But to be honest, he could actually be because when he leaves Mercedes quite a lot of Mercedes sponsors will also come with him and that would make him a pay driver. We've got people like Max Verstappen, he brings Roush into the Red Bull team and that's uh, a Dutch company if you didn't know, it's a Dutch like beverage company but yeah no one thinks of him as a pay driver because he gets results as well. The same is true for almost every single driver on the F1 grid. But no one gets it worse than Nicholas Latifi and Lance Stroll. And for that reason, I am making this video. Um, I just wanted to address that issue that we have as a group of people. Quite a lot of people in Formula One think that actually uh, it's all based on talent. But really, it's not. Unfortunate though it may be, if you don't have the money right from the get-go you're not going to make it. And yes, it's a tough pill to swallow, 
but that's the truth of it. So, yeah. Um, uh, if I was Top Gear at this point, I would probably say something like, and on that bombshell, but I'm not Top Gear. So, instead, what I'm going to say is, thank you for watching, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like on the video, leave a comment saying, I don't know, maybe disagreeing with me, maybe agreeing with me. I don't mind, just just leave, leave a comment, I don't care. I'll, I'll try and reply to all of them, or as many as I can. And, yeah, that's, that's going to do it for the video. Um... Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.